All right, and we're there. Oh my goodness. <laughs> ah, it's another. What is today? Today's Monday. Monday. Oh, it's Monday. Jesus, it, this has gotten. I think this might have been the longest weekend in, in that I've longest week in general I've had, and not in a good way. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah. Good morning, everyone. Oh, at least somebody's having a good morning. We'll try. We'll try. We'll try. I'm making this up. Yeah. I'm making it up as I go along. December 26th, oh, 2022. Ew. Ew. Which means we are now officially, what, five days from 2023? Oh, my yeah. goodness. So we can set the clock and start all over again. <laughs> Does it work that way? I don't know. <laughs> are you ready for this? Absolutely not, but go ahead. Yeah. Hit it. The views and opinions expressed within the video content found on the Indie Comics Network are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views or positions of the Indie Comics Network or its sponsors. Monty Moore. I am a 30-year comics veteran in comics, games, and movies, and you've been watching one of my absolute favorite podcasts, Catch the Craze. You are watching Catch the Craze. What am I listening to? And you're listening to Catch the Craze. Where are all the indies at? A Catch the Craze podcast. What are you watching? I'm watching Catch the Craze. What are you going to do? Subscribe now to Catch the Craze, the number one show online for independent. Have you subscribed to? You are an independent. Catch the Craze! Making moves on your own. Catch the Craze! On your grind in the streets. Catch the Craze! Join the movement. Catch the Craze! Yeah, catch what? it. What? Catch it. Oh my God, I lost it. I lost it. There we go. Oh, All right, here, here we, we are. Go. Hello. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, and welcome to another edition of the Rage into the Vlogs show. And I really do hope you're having a better day than I am. I mean, for those of you keeping keeping track, it is now day eight of my wonky leg adventures. Oh <laughs> but we're definitely at the butt end of it, which means that my butt has stopped hurting. <laughs> Actually, it's my back. But... <laughs> Close enough. Close enough. Close enough. Uh, right now, it's like I'm in a Goldilocks phase where it's like, uh, you know, every every chair, which, this chair is too soft. This chair is too hard. This chair is too tall. <laughs> <laughs> this chair is just right. Uh, yeah, no, now it's just finding that that chair that I can just, you know, it's like, look, uh, this was a week of a vacation that I wasn't expecting on taking from uh, the work, all the work that I have to do. Um, I do not recommend taking a vacation like this. Two stars. Yeah, two stars. Zero stars. Zero stars. You know, and, uh, but yeah, but it just goes to show you how sometimes it is good to just slow down a bit and uh, take your time with things instead of like trying to rush uh, to the end of the year, trying to get stuff done at the end of the year. When in the end, now that I'm looking back on it, it's like, you know, uh, my schedule's okay. You know, it's like, oh, I'm fine. I'm good. You know. Um, wish my leg didn't hurt, but you know, hey, can't have everything. But enough about that stuff. <laughs> you know. Ah, so hello, everybody. So who's in, who's in, who's joining us in the chat? Uh, so far, we've got Allison, hello, Joe D. McPhee, and Efrain. Hello, hello. Good, morning, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And yes, I see you. You very tired. Five people next to the giant eyeball on my screen. On my screen. On my screen. Um joining us from regions beyond and if you're joining us from facebook if you're joining us from twitter come on over to youtube join the sexy people in the chat you know it's like it's a lot easier for us to conversate <laughs> have conversation is conversate a real word i don't know <laughs> i think it is is it conversate 
It works. It works. Okay, we're, we're good. We're I, good. I'm, I'm, I'm going to call it a word. Right. Okay. My Scrabble is, dictionary. That's true, right? Yes. How many points in Scrabble, right? Um, so you can come on over to YouTube, join the sexy people in, in the chat, um, you know, and don't forget to hit the uh, like, subscribe, and the notification bell so you get notified whenever we go live uh, here on the Indie Comics Network. So for, I guess, uh, an actual introduction, hello, everybody. My name is Daphne Lage, and I'm a cartoonist, illustrator, and comic book artist from New York. Uh, I have been self-publishing comics since 1992, and I've been, and I am known for the furry fantasy adventure Tall Tales, which returns to Kickstarter uh, in uh, early 2023, so keep an eye out for that. And I am also known for my medieval fantasy soap opera drama, Eagle Raven, Heir of the First Unicorn, uh, which I am in preparation of hopefully receiving the books this week, so I can start sending stuff out and at least in, in the first week of 2023, uh, which, uh, you know, which, uh, yes, I am very looking forward uh, to getting that done as well. Uh, but in the meantime, you can read both my comics online at Tall Tales, T A I L S online.com and egoworks.com, E G O W R K S, where you can check out all my videos on how I make my comics here on YouTube at my channel at Daphne Lage, L A G E Art, which also simulcasts through. The Indie Comics Network. And now to tell us more about that is, ta -da! who's that? Who's that? Hey, I'm Nita Lanning. I'm a writer, <laughs> vlogger, vlogger from Southeast Louisiana. And I am the producer of the Indie Comics Network on YouTube and Indie Comics Network After Dark on YouTube as well. Oh, yes. We're going to, we're going to, um, Finally do a, a House of Bob straight from there. Uh, yeah, I guess we should remind everybody because now it's like we are only like days away, you know, from the monthly House of Bob uh, show. So yes, we will be running. Uh, we will be running a House of Bob show on December thirty first, so that you too can start your new year on the right <laughs> foot. <laughs> You know, so yeah, so join us this Saturday at 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern, where we will have our monthly adults only live stream where I will be drawing uh, some uh, naughty work for you while we, me and Nita, have a conversation about other naughty topics. That's you know, that's educationally naughty, yes, educationally naughty. Of, uh, I guess conversations that you know is a little too much for the day crowd, you know. So, uh, so yeah, so that's uh, so yes, yeah, so make sure to join us for that. All the links are in the show notes below. Ah, uh, so, uh, so how was your Christmas? Yeah, how was your Christmas? Yeah, it was awesome, it, it was <laughs> awesome and terrible at the same time. Wow. I hate going and visiting people, that part sucks, right. but I love getting edibles for Christmas. Oh, there and, you go. Like, just, just remember, you know, one like... fourth, not four, <laughs> one fourth. <laughs> It was one time, Daphne. One right. time. <laughs> Even God was like, going, "What the heck, Nita?" It says here, one. Four. He was. I was talking to him. <laughs> it's like, it's like, bro, is this ever gonna let up? All right. Yeah. So, uh, so what other goodies did you get? Did you? Uh, uh, no, it, I don't know. Socks. Did you get socks? <laughs> No, I got, but I did get a pair of slippers, which is oh, really good. nice. And I'm wearing them right now because I'm not wearing any pants. And my oh, well, clothes. that's true. We don't, right. We don't need to. Uh... <laughs> but anyway, no, it was, it was good because it was like, um, we, you know, the past couple of years have been kind of rough financially, but all the kids got, I think just enough to make them. I, I don't want to sound like my kids would be selfish or whatever, but for them, it was kind of a low tier Christmas, but they right. were all very appreciative. And that warmed me up. Right. Oh, that's good. That's You good. know, like it, it, it was, a, it was a good Christmas. They all seemed happy. We had lots and lots of fucking food and right. my kitchen's still feeling it. So, well, um, you know, yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> I gained but, uh, 45 pounds in two days. And well, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's the holidays. And then we get to start all over again, right? Are you, are you going to try that uh, getting off of sugar again or? Uh, of course I am. Yeah. Yes. Because let me tell you something, Daphne, 
and I know it, I know it, and I still couldn't stop myself. Right. Like as soon as I started eating sugar again, that inflammation all came back. Right. And it's like I'm waking up and I'm like, er, 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 uh, and I was jumping out of bed. Right. By two weeks in, right. but I just kept eating them damn Oreo balls. I know it's it's Oreo. it's hard. It really is hard. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, um, also, um, just a, a, a throwback from Friday uh, where, uh, yes, it was the all math, fucked up math episode of, of the show. Um, right, right. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I, I just wanted to, uh, oh, look at everybody getting all this cool stuff, PJs and manga and you know, it's like, yeah, I, I'm I'm a sock person myself. I, I mean, it's like I am always, uh, but it depends on the socks nowadays. You know, uh, you know, I like I like the tall socks, so <laughs> not 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 so much the ankle ones. You know, because it's like the old them. school athletic socks with the stripes, Daphne. Yes, exactly. Yeah, oh. you know, you know. Um, but uh, yeah, so uh, just to go back to Friday's episode where uh, I was doing my. Uh, my uh my my completely upside down math oh i just wanted to clarify something uh because some people did uh, bring up some uh some things about uh about my faulty math which i am i am completely sure it was um because like i said it was extremely superficial but uh you see the whole point of that exercise was not to say that tna books don't make money that was not at all. No, but they don't dominate the fucking market. Right. That, that was that was not at all the conversation that that um, we were having. I mean, it was literally. I just did that, uh, literally, just to prove the point that it's not as big of a market share as uh, as I guess a lot of people have this idea that it is. You know, um, now the thing is, though, does it is it a small market share that makes a lot of money? I am oh, sure yeah, it is. Absolutely. Oh, uh, I'm sure. Like if I added up that, uh, if I did, if I ran the numbers on that five percent, not not counting Polito, which doesn't count Polito, by the way, um, that yeah, it's a significant amount of money that those types of books make. Uh, but like I said, that wasn't the point that I was trying to that, that I was doing all that for um on friday um it like i said it was just to show that it's not as big of a market share as people because you would talk to some people and you would think that it sounds like that's all there is like 99 kickstarter is a porn site period right, you know what? That's like 99 percent you know um tna books and if you don't do a tna books you can't compete and that's not at all what i was trying to uh say at all it's like i just wanted to to just say that it's like um yeah, it's not as big of uh, an issue as um, <clears throat> it's not as big. I, yeah, it's a, it's it's an overrepresented genre. Yes. You know that's that's all I wanted to prove. Now you know, like you know, like I said, but it does make money. Let's just say that you know, it's like it, those types of books do make money. Oh, nobody was going to deny that they make money. Right. Shit, I give them money. Right. You know. Right. Yeah, we've bought those types of books before, <laughs> so. Um, but here's here's the thing. So, uh, you know, because like I was I was talking, you know, to JD about it uh, a little bit more. And, um, you know, and I, and I said, that, you know, the thing that I that I got out of it was that um, that if, you know, you're going to make comics, you know, you kind of have to decide like what it is you're going to be doing. It's like, you know, are you just making comics to make money or are you making comics to to, you know, to tell a story and this, that, and the other right. thing. And then it's like, JD jumped in. It's like, no, that's wrong. And I go, what do you mean? And he goes, everybody who does comics wants to make money at it. You know, and, you know, so it's like, you know, I, I kind of had to stop there. You do, but, but it's like, okay, at what cost? You know, I mean, right. You know, I mean, because it's like, you know, because I had said, it's like, there's so much easier ways to make money. And he said, no, people want to make, it's like, what it is that people go into comics to make money. What? Because, yeah, I know, right? That's my surprise. <laughs> then he goes, people, you know, people come into comics because they want to make money, but they still want to be like somewhat creative about it, you know? And it's like, 
you know, and it's like, well, I, I'm not quite sure about that either sometimes, <laughs> you know? I mean, it's like, I know that there's a lot of people who treat comics as just a stepping stone to, you know, to, to like to larger deals or whatnot. I don't think those people are really interested in the creative side of comics. Um, but, but here's the thing though. It's like, until it can get them where they want to be. Right. You know, or as long then, as they, it's getting right, where and then it's like be. the second, and then the second that they've reached the point that they were looking for, they never do another comic again. Right. So, yeah, I don't think that it's, you know, it's like, you know, let, let's, what's funny is that he, he always chastises me for talking in absolutes, you know, like everybody, everybody, but here he was saying, everybody just wants to make money on comics. Well, they, I mean, you want to make money doing what you love, right? Right. Yeah. You know, but, um, but you see, but I think that's what makes both our shows, uh, my, like this show and, and JD's show on Sunday different from each other because here, you know, I kind of think that we focus a lot more on like, kind of like the creative side of it, you know, people's, you know, it's like, why are you doing this? And, um, you know, it's like, what are your inspirations and this, that, and the other thing. Well, on JD's show is more business oriented, you know, like he wants to know, it's like, what did you do to get to the next level? You know, it's like, how do you raise funds, you know, faster, or it's like, you know, or, or that, that type of thing that he's more like the business business, uh, side of it. And I'm just more of the, yeah, kind of like, you know, what's your inspiration? What, you know, uh, talking to the muses type of thing. So it, it was just um, um, an odd, uh, I guess, like segue. Um, because, because yeah, I don't know. It's like, to, just to say that, no, everybody just, oh, <laughs> the comics talk <laughs> is referencing everyone in comics wants to make money, but your challenging is, is that it's not all as that, that not all is in for the long haul as opposed to fast grabs and pitches for other media. Well, right. Yeah. That's kind of how I like to look at it. You know, it's like that. I really would like to think that most people who come into comics, they, there's a certain love for the medium there. You know, I, I would like to think that, you know, I mean, it's like, granted, I've always said that I'm kind of like in a unique position where it's like, you, you know, it's like, yeah. Um, Right. It, it really is. Yeah. That, that really is the, the difference. It's like going on J, you know, watching JD's shows, like going to a panel at a convention where it's just, you know, just that and here, yeah, we're just, we're just having a conversation. Right. Um, yeah. I like that. I like that, uh, analogy. Um, you know, because like, like the last Eagle Raven campaign made like five something, I don't remember off the top of my head. Um, you know, would I have liked to have made more money? Absolutely. You know, but the thing is, though, if I didn't, you know, okay, like, 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 I really wanted this campaign to, to make $10,000. It didn't. But that doesn't mean issue six isn't coming out. You know, so it's like, um, or seven or eight, you know, it's like, like, I, you know, like, okay, yeah. Sure, I'd like to make more money, but at the same time, I don't think that it's it's not indicative of whether I get the work done or not. You know what I mean? So it's like, so you know, like like you know, there's a lot of creators in the chat. You know, it's like, you know, is this something that resonates? I mean, it's like, you know, is it is it really about just the money in the end, or it's like, is there something deeper? You know, I, I mean. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. It was just kind of, uh, um, I, I guess, just like a, a little thought that kind of like stuck in my head, you know. Um, you know, because, yeah, because I still feel that if you're going to do comics, if you can really decide, if you can actually decide why you're doing it, why you're doing this and what your intended goal is for it, that you'll have an easier time planning. And then if you just go, Oh, I, you know, it's like, I, I don't know what I'm doing, but it's like, I just want to make money at this. Like, like I said, I just think there's just easier, easier ways to make money, but yeah. Cause yeah. I haven't, I haven't made any money, yet, which right. is not true because I've earned a lot of money doing edits and right. 
and, and promotional stuff and everything, but I put it right back into promoting. Like it right. just there's there's no I'm not I'm not in the red, but I'm not in the black either. Right. Yeah, it's kind of like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's like you're just you're just riding that line until it's barely paying for itself. <laughs> right. You know. I mean, it's uh yeah, it was just kind of like like Patrick I don't know sort of fight in the chat. Uh, oh no. Uh, writing novels and knowing what you're writing about. Um, yeah, I'd say for me, it's legacy. What will last or can be passed down beyond me? Money will come and go, but the IP will always be there. I mean, yeah, I mean, sure. Um, you know what, Patrick? No, 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 don't, don't, don't. That's just fine. I think it's a good question. No, no, Patrick is fine. Patrick is fine. Um, I had mentioned before that I had wanted to talk about, you know, like AI on House of Bob, but after like really ruminating on it, um, I decided there's that left to think. There's, there's, nothing, there's really nothing to talk about, to tell you the truth. Um, you know, because it's like, you know, not to go into too deep of a conversation about it, but the thing is though, it, it's like, as it is, as it stands right now, there's only one question that needs that, that, that needs to be discussed and it's not us that needs to discuss it it's actually the people who are running these companies and the question is the fundamental question of stable diffusion and all the other apps out there do you believe that corporations should be allowed to use and profit from artists work without their permission hmm. and as long as that's the fundament that that's the foundation stolen artwork is the foundation of these programs everything else is moot to me there's really nothing to argue about you know it's like these these programs they fed people's work without their permission they scrubbed deviantart i mean and that's the funny thing is that deviantart did that whole hoopla with uh with uh, doing it their own ai and then had and then it's like we're all shocked 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 you know um when uh you know how dare they be gambling on my premises uh when they found out that stable diffusion was scraping the deviantart galleries without deviantart's permission so that shit was happening so it's like you know as long as that's the basis there's nothing to talk about about ai you know i mean it's like you know they have found millions of pieces of work in 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 copyright free that they could have used to build this machine to build these apps but that's not what they wanted they wanted contemporary artists that they could steal from right now and because of that i think that they destroyed what would have been an excellent tool for artists you know and well, they knew that the potential was there i mean look how quick they come up with the software to uh like destroy the algorithm no, no, no. they didn't come up with it it was there already well yeah it was a kill you know? switch because they have that they have a kill switch for this stuff that you know what that until they decide that they're either going to go to every artist that they stole from and license and compensate. Them and compensate them for it <laughs> or they scrub the entire thing clean and start over again, um, the conversation's moot. So so we're gonna so, talk about a dickless gonna, society. Right, we're, so instead we're gonna talk about dicks instead. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I no. thought it might be a better, a better conversation for a starter for House of Bob than AI. <laughs> you know? Yeah, you know, but um, but yeah, but that's that's kind of yeah. I'm, I, I decided I decided in the end I'm, I'm actually kind of bored of of the AI conversation because until because in the end I it, it's like because most people are arguing this from the standpoint of well why why would I take the stairs when the elevator is right there? Right. Well, here's the thing: I'm not talking about either the stairs or the elevator. Although what I am talking about is like how come the elevator was built to crush to crush puppies every time it gets it gets used. <laughs> You know, why was an elevator built like that? You know, it's like, that's, you know, uh, could they build an elevator without crushing puppies? That's, that's what we're, you know, <laughs> it's like, we know they can do it. <laughs> this is not a funny reference. No, it is not, you know, but the thing is though, it's like, you know, instead of like, you know, can they build an AI without crushing, you know, thousands and thousands of artists' careers in one shot? 
you know um you know i mean it's like yeah there's uh right because a lot of the arguments with ai is that oh art shouldn't be copyrighted anyway and it's like you know it's like it's always funny how you know how it's like yeah, these it arguments are always targeted towards individual artists and not the corporations that are abusing the copyright system right. i mean you know what that that's that's always but you know what that's the internet for you that's the internet for you that it's like any any kind of discourse and everyone will focus on the most vulnerable members of the that little discourse. man because the little man's easy to, to, to be the symbol to be the symbol of that discourse you know it's kind of like when they were talking about um you know they, they were talking about uh, uh real estate you know and it's like look in new york it's like you can almost count on one hand the the companies that own like like 80 percent of the real estate in new york but if you had read the discourse about rental properties and whatnot you would think it was the old lady with an extra house that was the problem hmm. you know it's like not the not the near conglomerates not the conglomerates that owns all this property oh no, no no it's the it's the widow who has an extra house that she's renting out she's she's the problem of real estate being so expensive so I think this is the same thing with the AI discourse that it's like, instead of focusing on the companies that are, that are doing this and, and the absolute reprobates that, that are running these companies, like, Oh no, no the artists are gatekeeping. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Artists are gatekeeping. It's like, no, we ain't gatekeeping shit, you know? And it's, it's like the only thing, the only thing that they, people are complaining about when they say art is being gatekept is that is the the fame and accolades accolades that they think is being constantly showered on us you know that's what they want you know it's like you know last i checked i don't have a lamborghini in my backyard so i don't know what the fuck they're talking about but but i, but, I didn't need to get into you know <sighs> you know, I, I think, but but that's why we're not going to be talking about uh, AI. Uh, but but in the end, though, I do stand by my uh, idea that uh, AI is inherently fascist. But that's <laughs> but we'll talk about that another time. <laughs> oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! Uh, but um, yeah. So uh, so yeah. So I guess going back to my initial, you know, is that um. You know, if you want to do comics and you want to do crowdfunding, right? I, I think that a lot of us really do have to decide. It's like, okay, why are we doing this? You know, and it's like if and if things like TNA books succeeding the way they do for obvious reasons um, is going to bother you to the I point you'd rather not use an entire platform that's set up to help you gain. But then, not not only that, that you feel like. Oh, I want to do this book, but it doesn't sell. Uh, then this was also something that came up on on uh, on Facebook that someone was saying that they had this book, <laughs> they had this book that they wanted to do, but they couldn't find a market for it, so that they were wondering whether they should just move on to something else. And the thing is, though, it's like, well, if it's a story you want to do, do it. But it's like, right. but if all you're concerned about is making money off of that you know, off of that uh, project, then either find something else to make that money while you're doing your project that you actually want to do, or you're just going to have to like really grind and, and find the audience for that. You know, um, that's, that's the thing. I mean, it's like, you know, if the story is important for you that you have to tell it, then tell it. But to say that it's like, oh, well, it can't compete against TNA books. It's like, it's like, look, you know what? It's like, are you doing a TNA book? <laughs> right. Th then it's like, you know, if, if, like I said, I don't know. I, I just don't understand it. It's like, you know, I think, I really do think that it's like, if you have a story to tell, tell it, but also be aware of the consequences of that and sometimes the consequences are that you don't have an audience that can sustain it you know right. i mean and, and you have to decide whether that's something that you're willing to kind of work with you know yeah maybe you do have to have like a day job 
to make money while you're building your audience on this book that you want to, uh, that you really want to do, you know? Um, you know, I, I mean, that's, yeah. So it was just, yeah. So, so in the end, that was like the whole point of why I did the Friday's episode, because people, I, I think that a lot of people are using TNA books as kind of an excuse as to why they're right. not doing their books that they, how they want to do them. And it's like, no, that, it, I don't know. I, I just think it's, it's a very, um, yeah, I don't know. It's just very strange. You know, that's like, that's like, I, I don't know. It's like, look, like I said, it's like, if I made 3000 on this last campaign, Eagle Raven issue six is still coming out. You know, I mean, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. really, I think I, I agree. I agree. It's like it's one has nothing to do with the other. I'm not going to compare, you know, Eager Raven to Lady Death. I mean, that's absolutely insane. That's ridiculous. I'm not going to compare Oswald to Zombie Tramp. I mean, it, it, right, right. It, it just don't. Now, are there certain things that those campaigns are doing that I've been trying on my campaign? Sure. You know. It's like, okay, it's like, you know, it doesn't kill me to have a TNA cover, variant cover on my campaign. In fact, they do remarkably well. well exactly. Especially the ones with uh, werewolves, <laughs> you know? Um, but, you know, but the thing is, that's not the end all. It was just like, okay, they do this. I do that. I make a little bit more money, you know, on these variant covers. I drew them, so I'm not losing anything. So, you know, um, so yeah, it's like, but but to say that your book can't exist because a TNA book exists is is ridiculous, it, you know. Because like I said, the top two hundred books, um, most of them were 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 collected strips from like web comics and whatnot that that the that the audience was there for decades practically, you know. So it's like. So what really makes you successful on Kickstarter is having an audience that's willing to help you there. You know, that's, that's, that's what I learned from doing those numbers, you know, that TNA books make money. Sure. You know, yeah, you can make money selling heroin too. <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, like I said there, you know, I, I mean, it, it, what one has nothing to do with the other, you know, um, so yeah, it was just, I don't know. It's just, it was just a very strange conversation. You know, I mean, it's like, yeah, do we want to make more money? Do we want to get past the ceiling? Oh, and this is a thing too, that maybe later on we'll, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more because I have to watch the episode. Uh, there was also another post. Um, right. Yeah. That, and that's the thing too. Yeah. You know, well, yeah, of course. And no, it's like, look, honestly, it's like, look. No, uh, that gets really dumb, weird. We, we've dumb. seen a book that was like a, a, a young adult right. comic, and then yeah. they did a not safe for work variant cover. And yeah. even though it, the character wasn't a minor, it was really fucking creepy. Because yeah, it really the was. It's, marketed to kids. Right, exactly. Now, mind you, not that kids are going to be on Kickstarter yeah, choosing right. books, sure, but, uh, you know, it was kind of weird. It, it was, yeah, it's like, there was just, it was just like, eh, context, <laughs> you know, there needs to be context, you know, I, I mean, just, you know, I mean, but I guess that kind of proves my point. Just because something makes money doesn't mean it's appropriate for you to, you know, like attach that to your book. Um, so, so yeah, that's, uh, yeah, so that was kind of like, like I said, it was kind of a weird conversation because it, yeah, it, it just it just really was. Um hold on, I think as well. She uh yeah, you know, it's like uh sh let's see, what do we got here? Yeah, it's like you know, Rich had said, have a day gig while you pour your passion into a passion right. project. Yeah, exactly. Um <laughs> you know, um so yeah, I mean, oh oh what was it? What was they say? Oh yeah, that um they were asking in the group that they were in. Like, how do you know when your book peaked, if your book book has peaked? Because that's also something that uh, we also have to take into consideration, too. It's like, like, if we hit a ceiling on Kickstarter, it, it's like, is that a real ceiling? 
or you know is, is that another barrier you need to break through right exactly you know because it's level. like yeah because that kind of is a, a I know that that's that's also something that no, people. Really you don't know you've about. peaked until you're on your way down. Your book's peaked if her eyes are rolled back in her head. Okay. Right. Well. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Um, oh my goodness. Um, you know, it's just. Uh, yeah, I mean, cause honestly, I think that that might be a scarier thought than, you know, like to think that. Um, that it's like, oh, this is as good as you're going to get on a, on a crowdfunder platform. Right. And and that like, no matter what you do, it's never going to move, you know, which is something maybe, I mean, I don't know. It's like, how would you kind of like move forward from that? You know, it's like, you know, like I, like for, for me, I know that it's possible that I'm, that's possible that I could reach five figures. Um, Right. Yeah. No, I, I agree, Allison. I mean, there, there are just some projects that it just doesn't, it, it just doesn't How? fit. Yeah. Peak versus plateau. Yeah. I, I mean, that's the thing that it's like, yeah. So yeah, it's like, your IP is, is pushing you away. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, oh my goodness. I, I mean, can you, can you tell I wasn't prepared today? <laughs> I wasn't prepared. I didn't have any topic. Um, but it's like, I, I don't know. It's like, is, is, which is worse making less money on Kickstarter or, or realizing that maybe you've hit the top of where you can go on Kickstarter. And I mean, golly, it's like, and how, but see, that doesn't make any sense because how, unless you're, unless you've got all what, how many hundred thousand fucking people are on Kickstarter backing you? Right. Have you really peaked? Have you really like, you, right. you don't mm. yeah because i know because sometimes it just feels like you know we hit that wall and then it's like there's it's like okay where do i go from here but there's you know, been like, so many times that you hit the wall and you think there's nothing further but then the next thing you know you're on the other side going up again right so it's like just don't give up yeah i mean you know, yeah, it's like, I guess it's like if you, if your book is something, if your story is something that you want to tell, I, I guess you're going to push forward anyway. Um, but the thing is, though, is like we talk about all the stuff about marketing and whatnot. And uh, oh, oh, really? It's like, let's say realizing you hit top because when you're slapped in the face with that perceived reality, that's when the depression sets in. Yeah, I would think so. Yeah. And that's why. Um, yeah, and you see, and that's the thing too. It's like it, it's like you know we can say that it's like oh it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter, and and I and I guess on a certain level I agree with JD when it's when um when he says every, yeah it does you know it's like everybody wants to make more money on Kickstarter because in the end it's the money that kind of that that kind of shows us that we're in the, we're going in the right direction I guess. And fuels the project to keep going. Right. Yeah. True. Uh, what was that last comment? What was that last comment that you brought up? Uh, it was. I'm gonna disagree with that because every time I look on there, I feel like I'm seeing somebody new still. Really? Okay. Because I mean, what what makes you think that there's uh, you're not seeing new people? Um, you know, which is kind of an interesting. Like I just discovered this chick and I really like her. I can't wait to tell you about it. We'll talk about her in a little bit. Oh, okay, yeah, sure. Just found her and I'm like, where the hell have you been? Right, yeah. You know, yeah, you see, that's the thing too, because it's like we're finding so many new people, you know, like we've never heard of before. And it's like, you know, but and then they, they have like, you know, like like Visenia, right? She just right. popped into our chat one day and it's like she has like she's working on issue 10 right now for comics. Like, where have you been? <laughs> Why are we only hearing about you now? So, you know, it was just, uh, you know, um, yeah. So what, what gives you, what, what makes you think that you're not seeing more new people on there? Um, I mean, granted, I mean, if you do have, I mean, it's very easy if you have like multiple issues, um, uh, right. <laughs> Let's see. Um, Oh, that's that's another good question too. I, I mean, yeah, it's like does does peaking mean that this is comics? We have no time for self reflection, Patrick. No, that, <laughs> no 
we always, yeah, I, I honestly, I think we're kind of like the most it's self-reflective so group <laughs> that there is, you know, I mean, it's like, it's beyond navel gazing, we're like navel spelunking, ew. Ew. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> you know? um, yeah, I mean, it's like, you know, it, it, it's like that. Yeah, it, if you if you feel like you've peaked, I mean, who would I mean, it's like, yeah, what do you do at that point? That it's like that no matter how many campaigns, it always seems to stop at a certain point. Right. You know, but at the same time, too, it's like you have to consider, you know, like the, the phrase, you know, it was the definition of insanity, doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a completely different result. Um, which I think is where all these new crowdfunding platforms are coming in. You know, it's like we, we spoke to, you know, we, we talked about, you know, crowdfunder before. We know that Backer Kit is about to uh, launch. I think they're about to do, they're about to open their membership this year, I guess. Uh, I know they're just still beta testing, but I've been hearing a lot of interesting things about Backer Kit. Um, yeah, so if anybody's got a campaign coming up that you're going to run on Backer Kit, please contact me because I'd like to follow you from Go. Right, yeah, so that we could kind of like, you know, study. The, I like to get a feel for the platform. Yeah. You know, because what I've been hearing about Backer Kit, especially, which is the thing that most people are excited about, is having new, having a new audience. You know, like that's having, already familiar with Kickstarters. Right. You know, and it's like, and, you know, because Backer Kit was one of these platforms where they were pretty much on every crowdfunder platform. Right. So they have the data from all these other platforms and they're using it to make their own crowdfunder platform. And yeah, it's like, and what I've been hearing on this last one was that, that they've gotten like more new people than they've ever seen on Kickstarter. Yep. And it's like, that's the part that kind of excites me more is He's like, yeah, we want more eyeballs on our stuff. You know, that's kind of like the whole point of why we do this. Like, it's it's kind of it's it's why that um, our our portfolios have become this very visual medium with adding YouTube to the mix. You know, where it's where people see us and associate us with our books and creates that association. And then when they see you on another platform or they see you someplace, they go, "Oh, I know that book. I know those people that, that I I watch them on the TV, right?" And you know, so having a larger audience is, I think, that's what we really want, which it ultimately leads to more money. Um, all right, that's that's the hope. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> you know? um but uh but yeah it's like so so chat tell me it, it's like so it when it when shit comes to shinola is it really about the money you know it's like is it you know is is it you know like is that what you're really gauging um interest on the money or are you just doing your book because you want to do it and money is something you can figure out later you know the yeah. answer is yes. The answer is yes. That, that it money, that yes, <laughs> yes, it's about the money. It's just, it's just yes all around. It's just yes all around? It, it's yes all around. Right. So, you want to make the fucking money, though, but, like, right. hmm. You know, because we, we've seen the people but who still have them. a story to tell, so. Yeah, because, I mean, we've seen what I like to call checklist comics. Right, where, yeah, for sure. Like, you know where you know that they that they went through a checklist of what they felt would be would make money you know like would just make the quickest amount of money on kickstarter backer total yeah you know that's that's uh yeah that's what i uh that's what as I long as the eyes on the project are growing yeah that's what i uh looked at on my last campaign once i realized that uh I wasn't going to make the five figures that i thought based on the uh, trade paperback um yeah, I I guess it was just talking from every to everybody here. Um, vanity projects are expensive. Yeah, that that's true. That's true because it's like, you know, it, it's like right because it's like I definitely consider my own work vanity projects. But you know, it's that's just what I'm doing. You know, that's just it. I mean, and and I have to accept 
that uh, that consequence that it's like if I'm going to do, be doing a book that, that that's this personal, you know, or it's like it's very niche, um, that I have to accept the fact that the audience is going to match that, you know, that that it's like, yeah, that I was watching the backer count once I realized that I wasn't going to reach five figures. And I just started watching the backer count instead because, yeah, it's like, can I at least get the same people to come back to issue five? And, you know, I didn't cross reference anybody. So I don't know for sure if it's all the same people or not, but the number is the same. Right. So at least I still have the same amount of backers that I had from the previous book. So that made me feel a lot better. Um, and especially, like I said, the, the, the that I've spoken about before, where it's obvious that that most of the people who are following that, who followed the issue five campaign, they were regulars coming back. And not only that, it's like the fact that more PDFs were being sold, which means that people do want to support the book, but just don't want a physical copy, which is fine too. Um, so yeah, so watching different numbers, I guess that means more to me right now. Um, you know, I figure, you know, like I said, I, I, I figure that more people are, that, that they're waiting for the trade paperback. So I'm going to save that thought process of, you know, it's like, oh, can we finally reach five figures? It's like, I'm going to save that for the trade paperback, you know, and just kind of like try to experiment more with my individual issues i mean the, the first one's always the hardest yeah you know that that's the thing i mean it's like you really have to go into kickstarter with a very realistic idea of how you think you're going to do on a first issue and then build your audience from there um because we've seen way too many people that like they've never been on Kickstarter before. Jump and, in there. Here's my goal: six thousand five hundred dollars. Right, and, and it's like that's I've got that's, no art ready, and yeah. here's a paragraph about what may or may not happen. But right. I have a graph, so right, yeah, yeah. You have that. You have pie chart. Yeah, you have pie chart, chart graph. graph. It's all the same. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, it. it but I think that once you once you figure out, like once you get a taste of what Kickstarter can do for you or any crowdfund platform, really, what they can do for you, um, then you start adjusting accordingly. Because in the end, it's like you have to do the first one in order to understand what it takes, what's necessary. You know, it's like, okay, it's, um, you know, it, it's, yeah, it. Yeah, it's yeah, and then it's like you just build from there. Um, man, I had I had a thought and I kind of lost it. <laughs> um, also, so many folks don't reach out to their vendors to find out how much they really need to put their product out. Uh, that's I think that's true. I think honestly, I think the thing that really that really messes people up is shipping. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I think that the one that I think that's the thing. Not as much as vendors. Um, although I have seen people really, really screw up the, the calculation on international shipping. Right. Yeah. Um, but I've seen more campaigns drown under shipping than anything else. Um, there have been some, uh, some people who they've had to change vendors at the last minute. And it was just like a nightmare because of course it completely screwed up their budget. Um, you know, mm. so that. You know, oh, okay, all right. So yeah, so ship it. That's true. That's true. Um, but uh, yeah, but I, I see. And it should. Yeah, uh, yeah, because even even now, it's like you know, sometimes I still feel like I'm guessing on shipping still, even though I have all these calculators or whatnot. Because depending on what zip code it's going to, the price can change slightly, and especially for international, if you go like over an ounce, that that could. You know, it's like I, I joke that it's like it's like you go over an ounce and all of a sudden there's 10 extra dollars for shipping right there. You know, it's like, you know, um, you, you know, it's like, uh, I mean, it's like, you know, it's funny, Nita. It's like, obviously, we, we were supposed to have a guest today. So I didn't uh, really prepare myself. Well, it's, a, it's all good. I think we did great. Uh, you know, so, uh, you know, so I hope everything was okay on their part. You know, we'll just. Uh, I'm hoping it's just time zone confusion or something. Uh, yeah, that's happened before, you know. Um, 
but uh, yeah, it's like the but I, I wouldn't I understand the fear of doing a crowdfunder. Um, but um, yeah, you really have to get that first one out of your system. <laughs> that that's really what it is. I, I mean, honestly, if it wasn't for Kickstarter, I don't think thank you, thank you, Patrick. Um, if it wasn't for Kickstarter, I don't think I would have gotten as far as I as I have on Eagle Raven. Um, because Kickstarter kind of gave me that that fire under my ass to get something done, you know, where before right. it would be like we had to get books done for San Diego Comic Con. You know, and and we would always work towards that goal, uh, but then when we stopped going to, to San Diego, we kind of lost our way there. And it's like, and Kickstarter kind of brought that back, where it's like, oh, I can actually raise money to to produce these issues the right. way I want, and uh, yeah. So now that's where my focus goes. That's where it's like, okay, I have a schedule for my books because I need to do, I want to do X amount of Kickstarters in 2023. So it's kind of re made me rethink, you know, like how I do my book. So, um, so maybe Kickstarter would do the same thing for you. That's like, once you get that first one out of your system and, and you can do a small, you know, like a small campaign, um, Kickstarter every January, they do a thing called make 100. They only do this for the uh, right. They only do this uh, for uh, well. Right now, right right now, I have like a cold compress under my ass, so there's no fire there, you know. <laughs> so, you know, oh, I I just I just wish this this you know this feeling would go away, and you know just mm. you know it's just horrible. Um, where they they do Kickstarter is a thing called Make One Hundred. They only do this for the month of January. And what it is, is that this is literally for people who want to, who want to like try out Kickstarter, but on a much smaller scale. So say you have a hundred of something. Now it doesn't have to be a hundred. You can have 50 of something or 10 of something or, 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 or it has to be, you have to kind of like your, your a hundred backers is how they look at it. Right. So once you reach a hundred backers, your, your campaign is done. So that's what they mean by that. Or at least that's the way I understand it. And I have, you know, so you you put like a small campaign in January and you're only going to sell like a hundred copies of something. Like, you know, say you're issue one, you're only going to make a hundred. Um, uh, don't, don't make a hundred in, in advance, just, um, you know, and then it's like what they do is that they do a special promotion in January. Uh, for these campaigns to make 100. Um, they, I guess they, they send out special newsletters and what, like the Kickstarter puts like a push behind those projects. Right. And, and then that's pretty much it. So you have to run it between January 1st and January 31st. And, um, and yeah, and it has to be like, once you reach a hundred backers, that's it. That's the end of your campaign. You don't necessarily have to reach a hundred backers. Um, I've seen smaller campaigns where they've only, they only, only had 40 backers. Um, but, um, you know, that, that might be something for you to try maybe for next year or, or you know, depending on how quickly you can get, a, 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 you know, I wouldn't rush it. I wouldn't rush it. So maybe that might be something for you to try out next year. Um, if you want to try something small, um, but technically you can do that any any time either. I mean, like, like Tim Vigil, he did a, he did a uh, campaign for Faust, the collected Faust, where they only had 777 copies. That's it. And they're gone. They're all gone. But the thing is, though, he was running a 60 day campaign for it or something like that. And it, they still it have. It didn't even make it a month. Yeah. It's like, they still have like 30 something days to go, but the books are gone. They're all sold out. So he has to sit there and wait for this campaign to finish. Um, you know, so, you know, it was, just, it was just really funny to see. But technically, that's what he did. He only made a limited amount. This is the campaign. And then once they sell out, they're done. Technically, the campaign is over. Um, he just can't close it out without it ending when on uh, the deadline. But, you know, but don't worry, Allison. If, if you... Uh, if you decide you want to pull the trigger on that, on that uh, 
house destroying laser. <laughs> we'll, we'll gladly help you as much yes, as we, we will. Can. We will be more than happy to help you with it. You know, so that uh, it won't be as a terrifying experience. Because it can, we'll, we'll, we'll hold your hand. Yeah, well, yeah, you know, it's like, because it can be. Um, yeah. Uh, Terrifying. Yeah, exactly. But like I said, once you get it out of your system, look, it's like running a marathon. Everyone says that they hate, they hate it, they hate it, they hate it until they cross the finish line. And then it's like, okay, when's the next one? <laughs> so, you know, it, it Kickstarter is kind of the same thing. You know, it's like you're going to you're going to do your first one and then and then you're gonna want then you're gonna like go like, okay, when can we do this again? You know? But uh Ah, uh, my brain is empty, Nita. All right, well, let's get out of here. We can go early. Anyway. Yeah, you, we got five minutes, you know, and it's like, you know, like I It'll said. It'll take we, us five minutes to say goodbye. Yeah, yeah take us five minutes. Um, it's like, I keep, now I, it's this, time this, this, I, <laughs> you know, I keep adjusting this, um, this footrest underneath my, underneath it. And it's just like, I keep moving it and it's just like, I just can't get comfortable anymore. So. Yeah, it's probably best uh, for us to go right now. So, so thank you everybody for this uh, excruciatingly rambly <laughs> hour with us today. Um, I hope you at least got something out of it. You know, like I said, um, uh, we were supposed to have a guest on, and I guess we just had to ad lib the rest of it. So, but that's okay. Um, you know, so um, depending on how I'm feeling, I may or may not do a live stream on Wednesday. Like I said every chair is bothering me right now. So, um, you know, it, so it's like, I, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. So, um, I may or may not have a show on, uh, Thank you. Wednesday <laughs> on Wednesday from, uh, from 4 PM to uh, six, uh, Eastern. Thank you so much. <laughs> Somebody mm. has to, I guess, <laughs> you know, um, um, and anything, anything else on the schedule coming up? Well, no, a whole yeah. bunch of stuff changing. I don't even have it together myself yet, right. but yeah, got a new lineup for new year. Uh, there will be no sketchy Saturday this coming weekend. Uh, how, let's see, we've got one vlog coming up and house of Bob. I'm pretty sure. Allison streaming Friday. Right. Uh, but for the most part, everybody's on hiatus until after the first of the year. Right. And we'll have a whole new lineup then. So right. On two right. channels. Yes, on two channels now. We get to try out the After Dark channel, which yeah, I'm very so excited about. I don't know. It's like I'm very excited that we're gonna have a dedicated channel. I've gone ahead and put the vlogs over there too, okay. just because we do, you know, the marketing right. aspect of it sometimes. Yeah. Uh -huh. And and there are a couple of times where it's like, wow, we probably should age restrict that and we can right. have it there. So. Right. Now we don't have to worry about Chad and his questionable content. <laughs> <laughs> his questionable comic decisions. <laughs> Oh, very nice. Very nice, Allison. Yes. So, um, so yeah. So thank you everybody uh, joining us in the comments, in the chat today. Thank you so much for helping me keep this hour going. <laughs> you know, thank you to the nine people who have, who have been watching us, you know, from regions beyond. I know you have your reasons for not coming over to YouTube, but that's okay. You know, it's like, uh, probably you were just working, you know, you were working and, uh, uh, you know, just listening along, you know, that's fine. And it's like, oh, look, my, my little jelly thing melted. So that's, it's not cold anymore. I have to put it back in the freezer. So, <laughs> so like I said, thank you so much. And uh, Nina, you have any final words? No, nope, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. Uh, yeah, me too. Well, I wish I was better. But, you know, we're going to be working on that. So if you want to see more of uh, my artwork or you want to... Uh, you know, just, just find out more about my art, my projects or whatnot. You're going to head on over to my main portfolio site at egoworks.com, E-G-O-W-O-R-K-S, where you can find links to all of my galleries and social media sites, but I mostly post to Facebook if you're interested in sketches and uh, kind of like real-time updates. 
uh, on uh, on whatever's coming up. Um, and also, don't forget that you can check out my videos on YouTube at my channel at Daphne Lage L A G E Art, uh, which also simulcasts through the Rajin Chu Network as well. And and because we are so close, last reminder: you can read the first five issues of Eagle Raven: Air of the First Unicorn in its original black and white format until January 1st, where the entire archive uh, resets to the full color uh, final Kickstarter edition that you will be able to read online for free. So if you're the type that likes to compare old and new, you know, it's like uh, uh, to see what differences there are there. Uh, you have until January 1st to be able to do that. But if you prefer your comics uh, to be more of a fantasy furry Lord of the Rings uh, adventure. You can follow the link over to Tall Tales, T-A-I-L-S online.com and reach the first 20 issues of Tall Tales for free. Um, yeah, so that's it for us. Thank you so much for putting up with us for this very, very rambly hour. We hope you got something <laughs> out of it. And in the words of the ancients, eat your food, moisturize, mind your business, and do the work. Because when you actually do the work, you never have to fake any of your accomplishments. And yeah, I, I got to get off of this this footstool here. because Good, because the edibles are kicking in. Right. Bye, guys. Bye. Guys. Bye. Bye. <laughs>